Hey guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to week four of the APA Academy season two. This week we're up against Matt O'Shea and the Montreal Milotics. Um, links to all the coaches will be in the description below, but obviously make sure you check out Matt's channel as well because he's a lot more consistent with uploads than I am. Hence why this is like super late already. So um, apologies for the bed hair as well. I'm trying to get all these videos recorded just so I can get them uploaded so I can get up to date just so I can kind of like please the guys a bit more um, that let me in the league in the first place. So um, it's quite hard for me to talk about the team <laughs> because I didn't build it. Someone in uh, my team's, I guess front office you could say, uh, built it for me because I was just simply too busy to build myself because I was away. Um, so it's the first time I've really played with a team that isn't my own and I probably didn't spend much time or enough time studying it before the game. But um, without the, the draft in front of me, Matt's draft is just ridiculous. Um, I want to say he had Lunala. No, not Lunala. He had Dawnwings Necrozma? Something like that. He has something like that in his draft, which I was just thankful I, I didn't see. Um, but he does have the Mega Latios, um, the trio Ho-Oh, Tapu Koko, Age Slash, and Seismitoad. So a really, really scary looking draft. Um, quickly go over my team from what I can remember. We have specially offensive Kyron White. Uh, we have an offensive but bulky um, Mega Kangaskhan. We have specially defensive Rhyperia. We have a speedy physically defensive Tapu Fini. We have a pretty standard speedy specially offensive Raikou and a Choice Scarf physical Hooper. So the first thing I notice when I look at my opponent's team is he doesn't have a switch into Hooper. The only Dark Resist he has is Tapu Koko, which will probably take less than half from Hyperspace Fury. Um, but even a physically defensive ho -Oh doesn't appreciate Hyperspace Fury. And if I can keep rocks up on my opponent's side of the field, then it should be pretty much as simple as kill the Koko, figure out who his Scarfer is if he has one, and click hy Hyperspace Fury a lot. So, um, I don't actually remember how this game goes other than the final score. So we're going to go into this just as blind as you are. Um, but I'm going to play it on uh, slow speed, just so we can keep up to it. Um, so we're going to lead off here. We're going to lead off with uh, Seismitoad, my opponent is. Uh, probably to get up rocks, and I'm going to lead off with my Mega Kang Scarf. Now my opponent didn't actually realise I was Mega Kang, he said when he was prepping. Um, so he wasn't expecting me to do as much damage and to get two hits. Um, so I do get the power of turn one, which is awesome. Um, and I'm going to set up Wish here because I'm expecting maybe like a Scald and another Earthquake, but he actually goes for Z Refresh, which is cool. So we now figured out who his Z Move user was, because I think Tapu Koko is a Z user as well. Um, but we also see from the damage roll this time round that I got a rather low roll with my Body Slam the first time round. So we're looking good at the moment. Um, this turn I'm going to Earthquake because I'm expecting him to go into H Slash, but he doesn't make that switch. And I get a super low roll that time round compared to the last roll, and my opponent does actually get the scored burn this time round. Which is really unfortunate because I ever predicted there. I'm going to click Wish because I know he hasn't got any sort of form of recovery. And on the next turn I can click Earthquake and kill this thing. And this thing probably isn't worth keeping, it probably isn't his rocker, it's probably Duck Trio at this point. Um, so he's just going to sack that thing off to an Earthquake and I'm going to get a Wish off. So that's great. Um, Kangaskhan probably isn't going to be doing as much damage as I want it to from now on, but I am, you know, still here as a wish supporter, which is which is nice. And I click protect to see what this thing's going to go for, and he just clicks calm mine in my face, and that is absolutely terrifying. But we have got a choice scarf Hooper unbound, which is really good, unless he does have a um, he does have Dragon Dance as well. Then we're kind of screwed. At this point, I had to pick a sack, and I figured, looking at my opponent's team, yes, I've got rid of one ground type, but the only thing that I'm really going to be doing damage to is ho -Oh. um, and I do die to the Dragon Pulse there, so I had to sack something, so I clicked Shadow Ball, got some chip damage, and that means he's definitely in range of the Hyperspace Fury. Um, I click Hyperspace Fury here, and I do get about 51%, as we can see, but I don't want to risk going for a second one, and I figured my opponent switching would be Tapu Koko. So, I could click Earthquake and just take this thing out, as long as it's not Shooker because I am the window berry, but I decided to get my rocks, because rocks is going to be really useful against that Ho-Oh, -Oh, which is pretty much the only thing that's stopping my Hooper at this point. If I can get that thing gone, I can just click Hyperspace Fury, pretty free. Um, I go into Kyron White because I'm confident I can take any kind of hit with a uh, from a fairy move, because I am naturally bulky, but 
Matt does reveal he has the defog on this thing, which um, is slightly upsetting because I probably could have set up Stealth Rocks on the ho -Oh, um, if I had just decided to stay in and click Earthquake on the Tapu Koko. Uh, Matt does bring in the Duck Trio and he does get the flinch with the rock slide. I believe that turn I clicked Ice Beam, but now this turn I'm going to be forced to click Roost, which luckily I don't get flinched again and I am able to roost off the damage I took. And we can see Roost is recovering more health than uh, Rock Slide is actually doing. So this turn I actually expect him to switch out and I click the Ancient Power, um, but unfortunately my opponent does stay in and we don't get the boosts and actually Chiron White goes down. So that was probably me being a bit reckless. But now Tapu Koko is down, Matt has zero switch-ins to Hyperspace Fury. Um, this is where having rocks up would have been great because he literally would have no switch-ins. ho -Oh is his play um, and I will die to a brave bird. I'm expecting this thing to be um, defensive and Tappy Finney does take a decent amount from brave bird but also tanks it rather well. Um, I predict my opponent I believe to go into Age Slash here and I click Taunt because I don't want it Swords Dancing and I don't want it to be able to click King Shield after he has clicked a damaging move. Um, I'm going to click Nature's Madness because I want to get this thing lowered health wise. Knowing he's going to have to switch out the next turn, he does click Shadow Claw, it does zero damage to me pretty much. Um, and he now can't King Shield so he has to switch out. So on this I'm going to predict that and I'm going to click the Taunt um, because I do not want the Mega Latios coming in for free and clicking Calm Mind. Um, this turn he does actually stay in with Thunderbolt, I wasn't expecting that. Um, what I probably should have done was go into Kangaskhan because he couldn't set up on me. Could have gone for some chip, could have potentially got the paralysis, kept Tapu Finny around. Um, but my opponent is going to switch into the ho -Oh, And we do see I actually get a lower roll this time around with the Hyperspace Fury. So again, playing with rolls. I'm going to stay in this time because my opponent cannot afford to keep in the ho -Oh. Something on my opponent's team is going to go down. But as you can probably tell, this game is pretty much going to work out the way where I have to sack something off to ho -Oh just to bring in my Hooper for Hyperspace Fury. Um, he does go for the Brave Bird and I believe... I am faster, so I think after the Brave Bird and the Body Slam damage, unfortunately I don't get a power. That would have been lovely. Um, oh no, he does click Roost. Um, I think that pretty much sealed the deal, that Roost, because I'm not going to be able to do enough damage to this thing, unless again I paralyze it. But with Regenerator, this thing is going to be more of an issue. Again, if I didn't get burnt by the Scald, then this ho would have also been less of an issue, because uh, Body Slam would have done a lot more damage to it. I am going to have to go into Hooper and I am going to have to click Hyperspace Fury twice. My opponent doesn't want to mess around with that. He is going to sack off his Latios, which gives me the defense drop. Um, which means that actually my opponent can just Brave Bird me after a second Hyperspace Fury. Again, I get a lower roll. Um, I'm now at half defense. My opponent's going to click Brave Bird and Hooper is going to go down. So actually, after Recoil, ho -Oh finished on about a quarter of its health. So actually, in the end, it was a really good game. It was a really close game. There was a bit of hacks on my um, Chiron White because that um, the trio should have died um, when it didn't and I would have had my Chiron White around so I won't say it's game changing but it could have had, well it was a big effect because I lost my Chiron White for pretty much no reason at that point in the battle. Also trying to keep rocks up would have been better but there was no switching I had to Tapu Koko at that point. so. Good game, Matt. I really did enjoy that. Guys, if you did enjoy the battle, make sure you do leave a like. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Leave a comment of what you thought about the battle. Make sure you check out all the other coaches in the description below. And I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.